How's it guys and welcome to the second Tackle Tuesday. Tackle Tuesday is where I upload a video every Tuesday about tackle tips and tricks regarding fishing and ultimately helping you guys to catch more fish. So in today's Tackle Tuesday I'm going to discuss sinkers and how sinkers can help you catch more fish, hook more fish, get more bites and land more fish as well as how sinkers can be the total opposite. Spinkers can also be the cause of you losing fish and getting less bites. So let's get right into it. Firstly, you need to understand the different sinkers and how you use them and why we use them. At the end of this video, I'm going to give you an awesome tip on grabbing all sinkers as well. So stay tuned for that. Let's start off with your normal teardrop sinker or bottle sinker like most guys know it. The bottle sinker is mainly used in rocky areas where you get stuck quite a lot. And um, you won't use this on sand because it's only going to gonna wash you and you're not gonna be a bait's not going to stay in um, the feeding zone or where you cast it in. So um, a lot of guys tend to use a grapnel or a, a wheat eater sinker in the rocks because of the main reason they think that um, it doesn't get stuck as much as, as different sinkers. But the reason I enjoy using a bottle sinker opposed to a wheat eater sinker in, in the rocks is I want my sinker actually to roll a bit. What this allows is, is let's take for instance, you're fishing in a gully, you're fishing for a cracker, you're fishing for a chalun. So the bottom is not flat. Obviously there's some crevices and there's, there's gutters and holes and all sorts of things. So when you're lying, let's say this right here, you're lying on the rock and this is a drop off coming down. That fish is on the bottom underneath there. And um, it's not going to swim all the way up to eat your bait. So if you can pull on your sinker or as the, the, the natural flow of the water, of the natural current of the water rolls you, you'll roll into that little gutter and you'll fall off of this ledge into the hole in the feeding zones where the fish are. So this is a critical sinker to use in the rocks and you must use it as a tool and not sinkers are not just there to get your bait into the castings or into the feeding zone or to use it as a simple tool to get your bait out. No, there's way more to sinkers than just um, getting your bait out. It's a very, very important tool for you as an angler to get more bites and to get more fish. So, these type of sinkers, your cone sinker, your wheat eater sinker, and your wire sinker, or the sinkers that you will use in the surf zone or when you're casting onto sand. So there's, this is very important where you use what sinker and why you use different types of sinkers. Also, the wire sinker, the, your, your normal gravel or wire sinker, how tight this wire actually should be makes a very, very, very big um, difference on actually landing a fish or not landing a fish, especially on edible fish. But first I'm going to discuss the cone sinker, where I use the cone sinker and um, why I use it and why not a, a wire or a um, wheat eater sinker. So firstly, where I use a cone, 
cone i like to use as cones because um or uh, i like to use cones especially when i fish for flatfish like your rays skates and um, sand sharks especially when you're scratching in the surf as well as deep water points where there's not a lot of not big waves or anything that's going to wash you around and um you're casting onto sand from rocks onto sand the main reason why i want to use a cone opposed to um, a wire sinker is that it has the same function as a wheat eater sinker it allows you to move your bait and your bait to roll a little bit and um, you can just give it a more attract more um, attention to your bait as well as cover a bit more area so if you have a wire sinker and you want to pull your bait all that you're going to do is you're going to unclip your sinker and you're going to wash out so when I want maximum distance fishing in a fairly flat sea deep water points flat fish or hammerheads or whatever I want to fishing for my first sinker would be a cone sinker because um, a wire or a wheat eater sinker this thick wheat eater sinker gives a lot of um, a resistance when you're casting especially in wind so that's where I'll use a cone sinker is where I want my sinker to move and allow it to, to freely drift around with my bike giving it a bit of movement but not too much so that I can wash out this is where I'll use it where I won't use it is the same with a with a um, wheat eater sinker is I don't want to use a wheat eater sinker or a cone sinker for edible fish like your white steam rice or cob the main reason for that is it does not clip over okay so why is that so important it doesn't clip over that's why I'm going to discuss these two together I like to use a wheat eater sinker um, I can clip it a bit shorter it's a bit flexible it holds a bit more than your cone so if there's a bit more a bit more current in the water but I still want my um, sinker to move a bit but not as much as the cone um, I'll go over to a wheat eater sinker I even sometimes clip it like a short or if I want to give my spite a lot of movement I'll basically have it short short like that and give it a lot of movement but again I don't want to use it specifically when I fish for cob and specifically for white steam rice any any edible sorts of fish because the reason is when you fish for a cob in a, or a steam you have that fish on so that cob shakes 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 and you're dragging this sinker all along the bottom so when you wait it out and see in the surf the bottom goes like this, it has little way the, the, the water pulls through, it makes like little holes on the surf. So this sinker will drag along, get stuck into that, those little holes onto the bank, off the bank, get stuck. So when you have a cob on and that cob is shaking your head, this sinker dragging on the bottom, same with the cone, is that it can actually help you lose more fish. Because this sinker is stuck, that cob shakes his head. It gets loose and it tears a hole. It jumps again, grabs on the sand, and it pulls again, and the cob shakes, and eventually the hole gets that big that the, the, the hook tears out and you lose your fish. On the surf for cob and steam rice and any type of edible fish, I prefer to use a wire sinker. I set my, my um, wire very loose according to the current. So um, if the fish takes my bait and I set the hook and the fish is on and it pulls it, this wire just, just unclips, both of them unclips and they drag along the sand. They don't get stuck anywhere in the sand. You don't get, get that effect of hook, gum, hook and gum again and, and all of that. So I prefer my sinkers to be very loose and um, as soon as you hook a fish, they unclip and um, no problem. Um, land your fish way easier another benefit of, of of wire sinkers is is i mentioned the tension that you can you can set the tension by squeezing them closer to each other you can you can ah, you can control the tension um when it actually unclips so Another reason why I like to use wire sinkers opposed to a wheat eater or a cone is I said in deep water points I would like 
um, to get as much distance as possible and the wheat eater um, is a bit of a drawback when you want to when you want to get as much distance as as possible the wire sinker does not have any resistance or the least of amount of resistance opposed to your wheat eater sinker so when there is a wind especially wind coming from the side it's much better to use a wire sinker because there's going to be a big bow in your line especially when you have like a side wash or, or a side swell um, pushing from the side if you throw a big bite and there's a bit of undercurrent as well as with wind this cone is going to drag 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 all the way with the wind and with the swell and eventually washing you out you're going to spend less time in the strike zone sinkers let you spend more or less time in the feeding zone so you want as more as much as possible time spent in the feeding zone that's where i like to use a wire sinker if i want to, uh, to stay as long as possible in one certain spot that's where i'd like to use a wire sinker so if i have a current coming let's say we're fishing a deep water point we have a wind coming from the right to the left as well as a swell coming from the right to the left and you're casting slightly into the wind that bow in your line if you have a wire sinker and you set it quite tight that's now fishing for sharks and rays and all that sort of, that sort of stuff is um gonna set it nice and tight and there when i cast that's where my bait's going to sit spin as and the swell is not going to move my bait the swell is not going to push my sinker and wash all the way out um, my bait's going to sit perfectly where i where i threw it and have more time in that strike zone more chance of chance of getting a bite as well as what i do sometimes i take a bit of elastic cotton and i cotton it around my um my wire so that it doesn't unclip at all that is when i'm fishing a big bite and there's a bit of current you don't want to wash another thing where it helps is fishing for fish like raggies where raggy will pick up your bait swim in pull you a bit and then leave your bait come back and eat it if your wires are set too loose, that raggy picks your bait up, your sinker unclips. And remember, a raggy is a lazy fish. Your bait drifts away, it's very unlikely to swim behind your bait and going to eat it. Hammerheads, bronzes, yeah, they do. But um, I want, like I said, as much possible time spent in the strike zone. Then understanding how a wire sinker works or any any um sand sinker it acts like an, an anchor a lot of people think you'll see a lot of people think that your sinker is lying like that in the sand or an inch like that and um a flat fish comes up and it jabs the flat fish and um, you get less bites and, and stuff like that no that's not not the case and um the longer these wires are the better they sit in the sand no that's not the case as well what actually makes a sinker sit is the length of this boom, or let's call it boom. So essentially what happens, when you tie your, sink, your, your sinker is tied on here, when you put pressure on it, your sinker is in the sand like that. So that's actually how your sinker sits. That's it. So the longer this boom is, the more it digs into the sand, and the better it sits. So remember, if you want, if there's more current, make your boom a bit longer. And guys, remember, if there's too much current and you need a long boom like this, don't fish. But there's some times that you have to fish competitions, leagues, nationals, whatever. There's a bit of current. You need to um, take a bit of a longer boom. So the longer that boom is, the better it's going to sit in the sand. It digs in. As you pull it, as you put um, tension here from, from your line going to your rod tip, that sinker does that, and that's how it sits in the sand, like that. So obviously, the longer that boom is, the deeper it digs in, the more it sits in the, in the sand. You're rolling. So, so remember, I told you guys, when I'm fishing for cob, I prefer this boom to be shorter. I don't want it too long because as soon as that fish bites, I want it to move. So, guys, you need to use information like this. There's no set rules, but you need to learn when to use which sinker in what circumstances. So, use 
the freely movement of a, a cone and the wire sinker to your advantage. Same thing with the wire sinker. Use its advantages to your advantage. So you know this sinker is going to stay in one spot. Use that to your advantage. You know this is going to drift a bit. Or it's going to stay in one spot and you can control it. You can pull it a bit in or whatever. Push the inside of the bank. If you cast on the bank, you can push on the inside. Use the movement to your advantage. And use a sinker that stays in one spot to your advantage. Use everything that you can to your advantage. Even, like I said, your sinkers, the opening, the tension of it. In some instances, you want it as tight as possible. In some instances, you don't want it tight at all. Especially, like I said, for cob. When you're fishing for cob and other edible species on the sand, set it very loose so that you can unclip and you can just drag freely along the bottom. Same with the bottle sinker. Use it to your advantage. You want that movement in the water as well. So, guys, I promised you one tip. It's something small, something stupid. Some of you guys will think it's, uh, it's not that big. But your sinkers in your bag, it's always lying like this. It jabs everything. You put your hands down. You jab, your, it, it stabs you. Um, if you have a bottle of water, it, it, it jabs in your bottle of water and it's watered all over or your cool drink or whatever. And it's just always in the way. So what I do is I take a small piece of hose pipe that I cut off. I push my sinkers, the wires close to each other, just like that. When I have it close, close to each other like that, I just take my hose pipe. I put that over just like that, just as a normal sinker and it's easy, easy to store this in your tackle bag, just like that, no wires sticking out like this, it's not uncomfortable when I want to fish, ah, just pull it off and there you go. So guys, this is what Tackle Tuesday is all about not about fishing, it's about one or two tips that I can give you guys to make life easier for you guys or to help you to catch more fish. Guys, if you found this very useful, please let me know in the comment section. Please like this video, please subscribe to my channel. And guys, I'll see you next to the water.